uh, Adi, would you be concerned about the overall multiples coming into question if uh, India moves from a largely fisc deficit, capex oriented uh, policy to one which also has hints of populism? So, uh, I think uh, the good thing uh, that uh, we have prevailing today is that there is a very strong revenue buoyancy, right? And even uh, if, whether you call it populism, whether you say higher spends towards consumption, I think the good news is that uh, the government revenues are strong enough to be able to uh, absorb them. And I don't think India's multiples will uh, get questions as long as we don't let go of our macro stability, uh, as long as the path towards the fiscal consolidation stays the course. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, next month, all of us are eagerly looking at the budget. And uh, to us, uh, one key uh, monitorable will be th the path to 4.5% fiscal deficit is adhered to. And, uh, and we believe uh, there is enough flexibility uh, with the government. Uh, you have seen uh, how buoyant uh, even the advanced tax collections have been. Uh, you know, over the past couple of years, uh, government tax uh, uh, revenue to GDP has increased by 150 basis points. Uh, we have had an additional uh, 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 step up in RBI dividend by about 130 basis points vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis expectations. So I think there is enough room for government to step up spending uh, without uh, diluting the uh, fiscal consolidation. And if that happens, I don't think uh, uh, multiples for the market uh, uh, will get negatively impacted. Mm. Okay. So, Ashish, net and what you're saying is, uh, at least even for the near term, the RBI dividend plus the revenues, tax revenues, uh, all of that lead you to believe that uh, both can coexist. That consumer spend as well as fiscal deficit plus the capex as was guided in the budget. Actually, I'm asking you not both. But this troika, yes. can this troika coexist? Certainly, right? Because uh, if you see in January, uh, forecasted RBI dividend was not uh, over 2% of GDP, right? So I think that alone provides uh, a, a better uh, revenue or maneuverability. Uh, we have also seen both in FI24 and in first quarter, uh, the kind of tax collection that have come in have been ahead of estimates, right? And uh, so I think if the fiscal deficit stays in control, if inflation stays modest, uh, we have seen the improvement uh, on the external account already. Uh, so the current account is uh, also now almost in a surplus. So I think the macro fundamentals of India continue to be very, very healthy. And it is that which is driving the high multiples. And if uh, 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 there is uh, an additional spend towards consumption, uh, uh, that will actually be positive for market multiples rather than negative for market multiples. Hmm. Okay. Fair call, which is, which is great to know. The other aspect, uh, Ashish, uh, that uh, people are toying around with is uh, uh, the, the, the spend on CapEx. Now, you mentioned that that might well continue. Uh, we've seen India Inc. go slightly slow on payments of dividends uh, as, as an aggregate in FY24 relative to what we've seen in the past. Is that a precursor of uh, available quantum or is it a precursor or is it an indication of available quantum to be paid out as dividend or is it a precursor to capex plans by the private sector which hitherto has been in fits and starts and only in select pockets and not quite industry wide oh i don't think uh, there's uh, uh, any cause to really I be concerned about dividend uh, uh, from India. I think uh, really dividends, uh, the bigger determinant, uh, uh, of course, CapEx is one of them, but a larger uh, determinant is corporate profitability. Uh, if you see corporate profitability, it has been on an uptrend uh, a few years ago. 
uh, corporate profitability bottom that uh, just about 2% of GDP, if I recall it correctly. Last quarter, we have hit about 4.2% of uh, GDP uh, in terms of profitability and payout is quite linked to that. Uh, 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 India Inc.'s balance sheet is also very healthy. So the leverage level, as you know, uh, at corporate India is now at a 25 year low. So even as uh, there ha uh, has been a step up in CapEx spend, and more importantly, uh, there are more aggressive CapEx spend, I don't think uh, dividends are going to be a really short change. Uh, we also are seeing uh, enough opportunity for the uh, corporates to beef up their balance sheet uh, uh, given the buoyant capital market from equity raises. So if you see uh, the number of uh, primary and secondary offerings that are hitting the market, uh, uh, we are virtually seeing three to four issuances every day. So, so I think uh, from the cash flow side uh, uh, and profitability side, uh, corporate India probably uh, uh, has uh, really the best uh, scenario that it has encountered in the last 12, 15 years. So I don't think dividends uh, will be a challenge. And uh, I think uh, once we get into FI25, we'll see the dividends will be more than FI24 for sure. Got it. Yep. Uh... Well, a boom in corporate profitability, but uh, FY24 uh, dividend payout came off. But as Ashish mentioned that um, uh, one swallow does not a summer make, watch out for FY25. What we'll do is we'll continue this conversation on the other side of this break.